What's going on guys? We're back on YouTube today where I can talk a little bit slower. I've got to jam it all in in 60 seconds and get yelled at by a bunch of people on Instagram. So um, today I'm going to take this time to go over the thoracolumbar fascia. Uh, it's a very important piece of connective tissue with huge implications. So a lot of people, um, they look for patterns or reasons why they're in pain. It's like, oh, well, I carry my I carry my purse on my right shoulder and maybe that's why my left toe hurts or whatever. Um, and a lot of times they're not wrong. It's just finding the route in which that mechanism is, is found true. So the thoracolumbar fascia is a, a massive intersection of, of muscles in the lower back, um, which complicates things. It can be a common cause of why uh, low back pain is so prevalent. Um, so here, we're gonna dive right in. I'm going to start with the sort of dense anatomical stuff and we're trying to make it real simple after for you. So basically, the thoracolumbar fascia, for any of you bodybuilders out there, it's your Christmas tree. It's a, it's a spread of connective tissue that kind of spans your lower thoracic spine, your lumbar spine, and, and the bridge of your pelvis. So it's represented here sort of by this black line that, that outlines uh, this picture. Uh, so now, how does it work? Or why does it work? Or why is it important? Why am I talking about it? Uh, so there's a push and pull force that acts in the thoracolumbar fascia that helps stabilize our low back and sort of make those connections, um, you know, between the purse on your left shoulder and the right hip in pain or whatever. Uh, so the pulling effects, the, the muscles that pull on the thoracolumbar fascia of our lower back are the lats, glutes, internal oblique, and transverse abdominis, and they all pull in separate directions. So the lats sort of represented here pulling this, this superior, the superior lateral uh, orientation, tensioning, tensioning on, on the thoracolumbar fascia. Um, the internal obliques are gonna come up from the side, so giving that inferior lateral pull. Uh, transverse abdominis pull kind of circumferentially around in the low back, and then the glutes uh, have a sort of a downward pull. Now, on the inside, we have pushing effects, those things that lie um, deep to the thoracolumbar fascia have a pushing effect on, on the fascia and on keeping your low back stable. So the pushing muscles or the muscles that push up on the fascia are your superficial um, spinal erectors and your deep erectors, or your deep spinal erectors or erector spinae. Now a very ambiguous muscle group, a lot of people refer to their erectors without really knowing what they are. Um, so the superficial erectors are group three muscles um, and they span from, from spinal segment to spinal segment. So lumbar to thoracic or thoracic to cervical or cervical to occipital. And the, the three muscles, they're, they're indicated by the same name all the way up. So it's your iliopastalis, uh, your longissimus, and your spinalis muscles. Um, so they're sort of identified here. So these muscles run deep to the thoracolumbar fascia, applying a pressure outward, um, which helps keep tension uh, through the lower back. Uh, now, deep erector spinae, there's two groups and we're not gonna get too involved. Um, the big ones that a lot of people hear about are the transversal spinalis group, so muscles that act um, from vertebra to vertebra, uh, the most prominent being the multifidus here that goes from transverse process to spinous process. Again, this is deep to the thoracolumbar fascia. This is applying a pushing force. Uh, these muscles often go inert when you're sitting um, so they lose, they lose tone and they lose an effective push on the low back, uh, causing, causing for um, a balance to be sort of upheld by other muscle groups that use the thoracolumbar fascia to stabilize the lower back. Um, so that's sort of the push and pull orientation, it's sort of a dense anatomical version. And we're going to scrap that and we're going to sort of draw this in a way that everyone can understand how the thoracolumbar fascia works. So the thoracolumbar fascia system works almost like a tent. So think of the push and pull effect that we talk about with the lats, the internal obliques, the transverse abdominis, the glute max, and the pushing effect of the deep and superficial spinal erectors. Uh, forget all of that. Forget all of that jargon, all of that anatomical stuff, and think of it just like a tent, right? So a tent, we have a post up the middle and then things that, um, that stakes that drive in the ground that keep, keep the tarp on top of the tent. So, the pushing effect of the deep, deep and superficial spinal erectors underneath the thoracolumbar fascia act as our tent post. Uh, so they apply a, a pressure upwards to give tension spread across um, the thoracolumbar fascia. While our pulling effects, um, our large prime mover muscles, our obliques, our lats, 
our glutes and our transverse abdominis are the pegs in the ground that are going to help keep keep that thoracolumbar fascia tends to keep our low back stable so um, this sort of lays out a, a framework where we can predict predict injury or predict imbalance predict tension um, by drawing out this map of saying okay well you know if you have a shoulder problem well maybe it's stabilizing the left shoulder will help decrease pain and the right the right hip under load um, and any any permutations of this can be can you can draw from understanding how these muscles interact with each other via the thoracolumbar fascia so knowing that the deep erectors of the lower back which are often inactive in people that sit and then throw in overactivity people complain of like tight glutes and their low back is tight well you can use this this model to unravel common injuries and then sort of give yourself a, a trajectory on how to how to start treating them um, both in, in the office and here like clinically and also in training I mean the real treatment for this is going to be fixing the imbalances of the muscle groups that act on this sort of tent like system to stabilize your lower back so a little food for thought keep that in mind next time next time you're training next time you're in the gym and we'll see you next time